back for our third installment for our March Gospel Madness. By a show of hands, how many people were here for the very first time with Dr. Bryan? All right, all right. How many people were here last week for Bishop Millicent Hunter? So I took some things from the word that they gave, and the word that kept resonating with me is expectation. Expectation. When you go to the grocery store, hopefully your expectation is you're going to walk out with something you want to eat. Amen? All right. If you go to a car lot and you pre-approve for a loan, hopefully you're going to get a car. That's your expectation. Is that right? So when you come in the house of the Lord, what is it that you expect the Lord to do when you're here? My hope is that when it's all said and done and we go out and get in our cars in that cold weather tonight, that we have been changed. We're not the same as when we came in. Can I get an amen, somebody? So my task is to pray, and then I'm going to introduce another mighty man of God who's going to be our worship leader, and we're going to have us a good time tonight. Amen? You know, it's hard to get excited about coming to church on Tuesday because you know tomorrow is Wednesday. And hump day very rarely is a lot of fun. You know, you just want to get over that hump and get to Friday if at all possible. But we're going to have a good time tonight. We're going to praise the Lord. We're going to hear a mighty, mighty word. We're going to have, we, at this church, we don't sing, we sang. We're going to have some good singing, and we're going to have us a good time. Amen? So would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, I honor and praise your holy name, Lord. Lord, I thank you for all that you have done in the past what you're doing right now, and what you're going to do in the future, Lord. We come to you tonight, Lord, with a sense of expectation that you're going to do something mighty and magnificent in our lives, Lord. Lord, I ask that you bless each and every family represented here, Lord. Bless them in a mighty way. Open up the windows of heaven and pour them out a blessing that they won't have room to receive, Lord. And when we depart from this place tonight, I ask that you cover us as we go on to our next destination. And in all these things, we'll be careful to give your name the honor, the praise, and the glory. For it's in your precious son Jesus' name we pray. Everybody say amen. All right. Wait a minute. All right, so right now, I'm going to bring to the stage a man that needs no introduction. The only thing I did find out last week that I didn't know is he has been in the radio broadcasting business for 51 years. 51 years. And I know that he's a man of God. I know he's devoted and dedicated to what he does. And he's going to come and lead us through worship tonight. Amen? How about one last hand clap for the Lord? Amen. Here's Mr. Doc Christian. All right, all right. All right, God bless you tonight. God bless you. God bless you. It is good to be here at New Beach Grove again tonight. And uh, the praise team is ready to go. They are fired up, so we're getting ready to turn them loose. When we come back, um, I hope we have some children here tonight. I've been giving away toys every night to some of the children. So we'll do that in a few moments. We'll give away some prizes. But come on, put your hands together. And how about this band? They have been working. You guys, and you know what I like about this? God has blessed this band that one of the guys has a bald head. He is my brother. <laughs> come on, let's give it up for the praise team right now. New Beach Grove, come on, put your hands together. Hallelujah. Come on and get on your feet. We came to give God some praise. Come on and clap with us like this. Come on, everybody. Let's go. Let's go. The song says, I really love you. Is that anybody testimony? Here we go from the top. Listen. I really love you. Hey. I really love you, Jesus. Because you first loved me.
say love lifted me hey. when nothing else could help love lifted me come on and say say love Come on, everybody, put your hands together one more time for the praise team. They know how to get it going. They know how to get it going. Yes, sir. And I want to shout out the band, man. I'm a musician, and I love the way y'all are together, man. Y'all are together. Yes, sir. And uh, tonight, we celebrate all of our bald brothers. So the guy at the keyboard is one. He's in the club. The guy on the bass. He'll be with us by next year. He's on the way. <laughs> All right, so you know I like to have fun. Uh, I was born, I was a terribly sick child when I was born. I had cross eyes. My eyes were crossed. I used to get beat up in school. Matter of fact, I may bring my third grade picture next week. But um, I had... I, I, I was almost like half blind, I couldn't see, so I got picked on all the time. So for that reason, for some reason, I've always collected toys. You come to my house, I got cars in every room, I got models, I got all kinds of toys. It's like a museum. So I saw one kid here tonight, over here in the left-hand corner, he was on his tablet. Is he still there? Because I got something for him. Is he still there right here on the left-hand corner? The little kid who was back here? It was a little boy, I think, he had on his headphones. Is he still there? Oh, there he is. Okay, man, come on down. I got something for you, Doc. Any more children here tonight? I just saw that one tonight. Okay, come on, man, I got something for you real quick. Hey, Jamel, you got another one? Okay, come on real quick, because we're moving tonight. Come on down. I think I have three. Um, yeah, all right, so I'm going to give this... I love building stuff. Where's the little guy who had on the headphones? Where's he? Come on. I want to give you this. This is a model. You have to put it together, okay? And um, I have this tricked out tambourine. It lights up and everything, so I'm going to give that to one of you guys. This is a little Batman, so I'm going to give that to you. And this I'm going to give to you. I love toys, man. I collect toys. And I think that's it. And for two grown people, um, I'm just going to randomly pick somebody. I've got Kirk Franklin's CD. Let's give it to somebody in this row, Jamel. Anybody you pick, anybody in this row, give them the Kirk Franklin CD. And then go to the other side and give them the other CD. That's the Kirk Franklin. And give them the other CD. Anybody on that side. All right? All right? Um, before we go any further tonight, I want you to put your hands together for your AV team. 
Um, I don't know if they're up there tonight. There's a man and a woman. They're the cutest folk I've ever seen. Every time I come here, they're on the cameras and doing all the stuff. So I don't really know their names, but you guys know them, and we want to shout them out for the fantastic work that you guys do. Your AV ministry here is on the ball, so we definitely want to shout them out. And uh, we are right on time, so we're going to keep it moving. It gives me a great deal of pleasure to introduce my friend. I was just telling my son tonight, we passed the old church coming over here, the old church site, and that's where I met Dr. Maxwell. A swell guy, man, been the same from day one. Been the same from day one. And by the way, my wife is not here tonight. She had uh, some dental surgery, so she'll be here next week. Uh, I told her to go ahead and rest tonight. My son, man, I love him. He drives me out here so I don't have to drive. We appreciate it. But right now, I want you to put your hands together for your pastor. <laughs> the funniest man in gospel. <laughs> Come on, give it up for Dr. Willard Maxwell. God bless you, man. What's up? What's up, everybody? What y'all crunk over here, boy? We in Club New Beach. What's up, baby? Man, it's hype in here. How y'all doing? Y'all good? Y'all good? Man. <laughs> oh, my goodness. This is so cool. Y'all look so good today. Just clap for yourself. Clap for yourself. Looking good. Man, I feel good. I couldn't, I couldn't go to church Sunday because my leg was tripping, boy, but I'm so glad I'm in the house of God. How many people are glad they in the house of God? My goodness. Boy, this energy feel good. This energy feel good. But I, I, I love y'all so much. Thank you, Deacon Easley. Thank you, uh, Minister Dre. Thank you, praise team. Amen. It's all good, man. It don't matter. God always does what he does. What? That Miss Roxanne at church? Oh, Lord, Elizabeth, I'm about to have it, honey. Oh, Lord, she at church today. I ain't say, oh, Lord, you all right? I can't even play and wobble right now because my leg wobbling anyway. Amen. We just going to keep it straight and narrow. Amen. But it's funny, though, man. It's funny, though, because they, <laughs> they had me practicing walking because I was, was limping. And they had me walking over this stuff. And I'm like, don't nobody walk that stiff with white folk. I ain't going to never be able to walk like that. I'm for real, they had me going through a walking obstacle course. I'm like, dude, a black man don't walk like that no way. So you might as well understand, you're going to keep thinking my leg messed up because I ain't going to never be able to walk like that. It's crazy. <laughs> anyway, y'all know what it is. Welcome, 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 welcome. Can we give a shout out to Doc Christian? Come on, somebody. Amen. I don't care how old you are, you grew up listening to him. Amen. That joke has been in radio 51 years. If you 89 years old, you grew up listening to Doc Christian. If you won 120, baby, you grew up listening to Doc Christian. Amen. Somebody, somebody sent me a text, uh, uh, sent me an inbox from New Boy News talking about I grew up with Doc Christian. I was like, and everybody did. Amen. Took him in the game 51 years. 51 years. Come on, somebody. 51 years. Amen. My goodness. Amen. What? My goodness, y'all look good out here. Who we got in the house? Let's welcome everybody. Who we got in the house? Who here this morning? Oh, my God, this afternoon. I missed Sunday. Y'all sprang forward and just left me. I, I'm still on Sunday morning. I, oh, I'm on dial up, y'all. <laughs> my goodness, who in the house? Who we got here? What church, what church is out here today? Harvest. Harvest is in the house. That's what I'm talking about. Amen. Amen. Harvest in the house. How many churches you got? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Is, I got about, she had about five churches. <laughs> she's an honorary membership. She got all the, all, she got all the churches. Eh? <laughs> ah, she be talking about, you lazy lineman being, you only got one church, I got five churches. <laughs> Me go to 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock in worship at 7 p.m. on Sunday. <laughs> Oh, Jesus. Oh, gosh. I remember everywhere. You just make sure you send all your time to New Beach. Amen. I don't care where you go. <laughs> go wherever you want to go. Just bring the money back here. Amen. 
<laughs> oh my God, who else in the house? Who else in the house? Zion Prospect, what's up? Well, you got the coolest old school pastor ever. That man is so daggone cool. Do you even preach him? He just be like, come to Jesus. That joke is smooth. He ain't got to preach. I'm telling you. Anybody else? Who else in the house? First Baptist East End. Who, where you at? Hey, hey, check him. You know, that's them hood churches. Hey, to frisk them up. I mean, hey, security, you got East End folk over here from the number streets. <laughs> ah, oh, Serena, I, I, he wrote that joke. I'm telling you. One me, man. I'm going this side. <laughs> Security didn't even move. You saw security move. They ain't even move. They went, look, they walked out the door. They, I said, they said, East End security just left. I don't see, you see them? See, none of We need some new security. <laughs> Anybody else? Who else in the house? New Living what? New Living Well. That's a long name. My goodness. You know that whole name. You saved. I know you saved. My God. You asked me if I went to your church, they'd be like, where you going? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. She's there. <laughs> you got a million names, boy. Any other, any, anybody else in the house? New Hope. Man, now don't be coming up here singing he going up yonder. You know, your pastor want to bury everybody. Amen. <laughs> we started letting him come. He kept coming to sing a funeral song, killing all my members, man. Yeah, he's like, brother, he come up here. I'm going up yonder. Negro, this ain't no funeral. Jesus. <laughs> I was like, this joke is happy somebody died. He preaching, he's trying to see who's going to die next week. Hold on. <laughs> so I call that joke with the Undertaker. That's where you go. You go to Undertaker Baptist Church. That's where you go at. <laughs> who else in the house? Who? <laughs> Everybody else scared to say, you crazy, man. <laughs> it's all good, man. Just go to a normal church. <laughs> what, what, what church? Six Mount Zion, amen, amen, amen. So look, you're going to have to start paying for your seat at 8 o'clock because you always hear 8 in the morning. So we ushers, see her right there, 8 o'clock, she got a charger for her seat. She go to somebody else's church. <laughs> you don't get, we don't get no free, we don't get no free seats out, amen. <laughs> I just mess with you. She does so much work with us. We thank God for her, amen. For real though, amen. We do so much work, partnering with her church and other people, amen. Who else in the house? Oh, we got pastors over here, pastors, amen. What's the, all the pastors stand for me, all the pastors, amen. I ain't gonna say nothing about Pastor Jesse James. You know he'll kill you anyway, amen. That joker got a name. He will cut you, he will kill you. <laughs> I ain't, I'm, you know what, pastors? I ain't going to mess with y'all. I'm going on this side. They got Pastor Jesse James. Joe will shoot everybody. Boy, come to Jesus. You don't want to come to Jesus, pal. I'm telling you, hey, New Hope, that's your pastor's favorite pastor because he killed everybody. You know what I'm saying? He sounded like that dude, what was that on, uh, on, on a, not an American Gay Song. Anyway, Bumper Johnson movie, when the dude said he done brought so much prosperity to the city. Amen. Are you killing? Yeah, Marshall, huh? Harlem, yeah, man. He done, he done brought all so much prosperity to the city. Amen. Amen. So if you go in and don't come out, I know where you at. Amen. <laughs> brought to you by <laughs> don't hate the preacher.com. <laughs> oh. Uh oh. I feel I gotta. I gotta be sophisticated now. The doctor is in the house. Dr. Philip Point is in the house. I gotta, I gotta act sophisticated now. Amen. And any other, any other churches in the house? Bethel Restoration Center in the house. See, I was normal, you see, because the doctor is in the house. See, I'm chilling there. Amen. And where are you from? Is anyone else? Anyone else? Yes, you over there. Who? Gethsemane, oh, amen, hallelujah. It ain't third, so you good, amen. We know how Bishop really do. You did get a sign, uh, permission slip to come here, right? <laughs> no, Bishop don't let y'all go nowhere without sign permission for him, amen. 
Oh, Jesus. Who else in the house? Anybody else in the house? Amen. Nobody else in the house. Amen. Welcome, everybody. Amen. We thank God for y'all this morning. I mean, this, I'm telling you, I miss Sunday. I'm still on Sunday morning, man. man. My goodness. Well, anyway, welcome, welcome, welcome. We thank you for being here on today. Come on, somebody. We love y'all. We thank y'all. Hey, Amen. How we hold on one second? Time out because I know we did an audible this earlier. Let's see. All right, cool. Look, look here. We got today, we're we, we going to call the audible, amen. They already snitched on the deacon. They said the deacon messed the program up. That's what he said. They met me at the door. Deacon didn't do what you said. <laughs> Straight snitches. <laughs> if you want, and police, if you want to teach people how to tell y'all what's going on, come to New Beach Grove, because we got a whole bunch of snitches in the house. We can do a great workshop. <laughs> I ain't even getting it no good. Deacon didn't go by the program. He messed it up. <laughs> Who digging easily? <laughs> oh my! <laughs> Straight snitching, boy. Straight snitching. But anyway, man, my dude is in the house. My goodness, my dude, the Prince of Praise. Come on, somebody. The Prince of Praise. My goodness, he has been doing this so long. Come on, somebody. He done dropped 20 something plus albums. He lets you know that he ushers in the spirit. If you have this man of God, time out. I'm going to tell you how gangster he is. I got to tell him this story. And, and who was that that called you? Nephew Tommy. Woo, Jesus. Y'all ever heard? Google this. If y'all ain't heard when Nephew Tommy tried the punk Byron Cage early in the morning, talking about he was going to take your Dove Award. Was it a Dove? Yo, Stella. He's, he turned to act like the stuff was messed up. He was calling. And so, you know, Byron, you know, he a holy person, but he like Jesse James. He killed folk. See, I didn't really understand the scripture when they, when, when God told Hezekiah, uh, uh, he told Hezekiah to, throw, to put the, the, the psalmist in the front. I was like, God, that didn't make no sense. Then I met Byron Cage. I was like, this joker crazy. I see why. They say it's seeing the psalmist out there. Boy, if you got a real psalmist like him, he'll choke the devil for you. You ain't got to worry about it. Anyway, nephew Tommy called him early in the morning talking about he got to get the Stella Award. Every, he got to come back and get it. He said, well, you ain't coming back and get this. And then he kept talking, and then he kept throwing scripture at him. And then he said, well, I'm going to come to your house and get it. He said, well, come, and you'll catch the holy hands of the Lord. I swear, you got to Google it. It ain't no lie. You can't make this up, dude. He called it joker like 7 in the morning. If you know B, B ain't waking up at 7 in the morning unless he got to catch a plane. So first of all, he mad because he called this early. But when I tell you, though, the righteous indignation to be angry and sin not <laughs> was definitely in this man of God. You, yeah, I don't know why I'm using that to introduce him, but that joke was crazy. When I tell you, I bet you they'll never call him for a joke again. Man, that... I'm like, I don't know who got pumped, but it wasn't him. Amen. You the about to Prince put, of Boxing, yeah. Byron Cage. <laughs> he was about to put them jokers out of business. But anyway, multiple Dove winner, multiple Stellar Award winner. This man of God really has won more awards than you think because he writes so many people's songs in the background. And he doesn't even care about the credit or the glory. Such a humble man of God. I met him back when I was in the ATL. When I first got here. The reason why I met Doc Christian cost of him. And so Byron was coming in and, and Brother Doc said how in the world you get Byron here? And I don't know. You know, you know, you know he, Doc Christian a, a G2. I was like, what? He, Doc called me. I felt like, oh man, like I ain't supposed to bring no song. He's like, hold on dude, you ain't come kiss the ring. You can't bring this joker in here. <laughs> Doc said, how you get him in here? I ain't know who he was. But Doc gave me my first comedy show here. He had me doing it for the male people. And that, that was dangerous. That was like Jesse James people. That when the male and people were shooting everybody. But anyway, I was able to meet a lot of people because when I first got down here, when we was in the little church, nothing wrong with it. We was in the little church. Um, um, they Byron Cage coming. And then nobody believed he was coming for real. <laughs> And then when he came, we had to stall so long so people could come. They were like, you there, man, hold on. So the, the choir had to sing about 10 songs so y'all Negroes could get dressed, put y'all clothes on, snap the right wig on, tighten the lace front, trim it up, you know what I'm saying, the lace front and all that stuff. 
put your half wig on and all that. They had to get all that together, then they came. This man of God came and he took care of me my first year at New Beach Grove to give me, come on somebody, to lend me some juice. Come on somebody. I don't know if you ever passed it before, but you need a whole bunch of juice when you first come in to the deacon board. Come on, somebody. When you first have a church meeting, you got to have some juice. <laughs> and Brother Byron Cage, the Prince of Praise, came here because he was my brother. Came here, and we, I ain't going to tell you what we gave him because he ain't going to do that price for you. <laughs> he came here with a full band, a whole busload of singers, and that man of God tore the house down. He tilled the ground. Come on, somebody. How many people know, how, can the preacher say amen? How many people know until the ground is tilled, you can't plant no grass? Until the ground is tilled, you can't plant no fruit? This man of God came in New Beach Grove and tilled the ground to make sure that glory would fall in the house and that way he would make preaching easy, he would make pastoring easy. Can I tell you something? Whenever you get ready to preach, if you come up behind this man of God, you sure enough going to show up and show out because he's going to clear the demons out the house. He's going to move the Jezebels and the Absalom spirits. He's going to crush down the spirits of, of all types of debauchery because this man of God walks in the anointing. The next voice you're about to hear after I sit my talking self down is none other than the Prince of Praise, Baron Kay. Well, well, praise the Lord, everybody. Can you say thank God for your pastor, the funniest man I know on the East Coast? <laughs> Amen. How many of you know, were you all able to load all that up? How many you know that your God is like Noah? There is no God like our God. How many of you know you serve the true and living God? Well, let me see you give him some praise that he deserves. Come on. I'm ready. Let, let me see you give him the praise that he deserves. Come, is that the best one you have, New Beach Grove? Come on. Is that the best one that you have? Come on. We're going to give the glory, all the honor, all the praise to him today. Come on. Come on. Put your hands together like this. Come on. Listen, we're not going to give up in this season because God has promised to keep us, come on, to do great and mighty things for us. Come on, let's sing it, y'all ready? Come on, sing it. Oh, I can't Come on, sing it, y'all. I said, I can't give in. I can't give in. Listen, y'all, I won't turn back. I won't turn back. I put, I'm built to win. Come on, say it again, say it again, say it. I can't. Come on, clap your hands. I can't give in. I can't give Come on, say it to them. I won't turn back. I won't turn back. I won't turn back. I'm built to win. Come on, say it to them. All those trials, all those trials are picked up. There's still a race for me to run. Put your hands together, say, I can't, I can't give up. Come on, come on, we say that. Hey, I can't, I can't give up, won't give up, can't give up. Come on, clap your hands, somebody. I'm going to stick his head. I'm not going to give up. I can't give in. I can't give in. Come on, say it to him, say, I won't turn back, no. I won't turn back. Uh -huh, come on, say, I'm built to win. I'm built to win. Come on, tell the like all those trials that. Say so still, there's still a race for me to Come on, come on, clap your hands. Somebody say, I can't give up. Hallelujah, come on, say it. Come on, say never, y'all. Never, never am I going to worry or complain, y'all. I know I'm not going to lose, but I'm going to gain. Yes, I will. Never gonna give it, no. Never. Come on, cause your provision will cause me to win. Say never. never. Never when I'm through in the time, Lord. Never. You promise to make a way for me somehow, Lord. Never. never. I've come too far now to quit, y'all. Never. never. Come on, come on, say the same, say the same. Say he's deep. He's deep in me. My mind. You 
keeping me alive for real Jesus. He's keeping me alive. I'm still standing. I'm still trusting. He's keeping me alive. Because of what you promised me, Jesus, you keep. He's keeping me alive. Come on, you know you're still here because of his goodness. He's keeping me alive. I'm still here because of his faithfulness, Lord. He's keeping me alive. I did die in the pandemic, but you kept it all. He's keeping me alive. That's why I pray that I bless your name, yes, sir. He's Time. Come on, say he's been, he's he's been, been, been me. Alive. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together like this. If you know you're here because of the goodness of God, because of his faithfulness, come on, put your hands together. That's why I say something like this. Look at somebody real quickly and say, neighbor, say this. Can't nobody say do me. Do me like me. Can't nobody. going in here a great word is get ready to happen come on come on come on put your hands together like this come on come on turn that up for me in here please hallelujah I wrote this song right here too because I always want to pro proclaim that glorious name of Jesus come on come on come on let's say it like this y'all ready come on say this there is a name say this a glorious name Deserving of praise. Marvelous things. Come on, say it like this. You bring honor. It brings calm to all And it helps me to weather every storm. You give the strength that I need. And there's no name that's greater than yours. Come on. Come on, say it. Something happened. Come on, sing it. What's his name? Jesus. Every knee will bow, every tongue proclaim. That all power and your yeah. Oh, yeah. Say that name. Something happens when we call. What's his name? Jesus. The King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Come on. Come on, Seth. You have all power and like this. Come on, y'all. Let's call his name. What's his name? Jesus. Come on. Come on, our God and our Savior. Come on. Say that. that name. Come on. We bless your name, God. Give you all the glory. The name. Now, I like this part right here. Say, 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 say it's Zeus. Like no other. Like no other. Say, and it comes. Situation, take it up. Like no Say it's it's like no other. Like no other. Say it like no other. Come on, it reveals. It Here we go. Say this. Like no the same order the crazy. Like no the things you do still amaze me. Like no 
You live for in depression. And then you pronounce a blessing. You help me to win, Jesus. Every challenge in my life. And when the trouble comes, help me win the fight. And when I'm lonely, you guys, sometimes I'm lonely by myself. But you know how to hold me. Hold me like nobody else. Listen, listen I wish I had some time to tell you everything. Listen, that the Lord has done and how good the Lord's been. But I'm going to try to keep it short, y'all. Because I know we still got things to do. But let me just mention a couple, huh? And then I'll be through. God, I thank you for life, huh? For my health and my strength. All the blessings and favor. For the healing within Jesus. Because when I was depressed, huh? Because of things in my life, huh? You to hear my mind. Let me know it's going to be all right. When I wanted to complain. Because of what was happening to me. You reminded me, Jesus. It's you who lives in me. Oops, I'm sorry, y'all. I'm just going on and on. But y'all just don't know everything the Lord's done. So excuse me in here. I feel like taking a praise break. Because when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my soul cries out. Hallelujah to your name. Thank you for saving me. Come on. Thank you for keeping me, Jesus. Thank you for healing my body. Thank you for keeping my mind. Making ways out of no way. Come on, come on, you are God. Say like no other Jesus. We bless your name, Lord. Say like no other. Come on, y'all, let me hear you singing. Say like no other. Come on, let's tell him. The only one of his kind. And he's a good friend. Come on. My king is my Lord. My savior deliverer. My soon coming king. Your life no other. Say like no. Let me hear you sing. Come on, sing it in. You're like no other. That's why I bless your name. Say like no other. That's it. Say like no. God bless you. Say like no other. My goodness, we are in worship. My goodness, the Prince of Praise, he'll be back. He will be back. We just thank God for your spirit in here. Bro Brother Christian, I know you gave away some toys, but the other week, how much money you gave people? $100. How many times you do that? Just once, my goodness. We got to make sure we give them $100. Give me $100 back, amen. In fact, give him $200 back, amen. We just thank God for him, amen. Thank God for his generosity. Come on, somebody. He giving y'all toys. You the new, you the new Uncle Charlie. You Uncle Doc, amen. Uncle Doc giving out hundred dollar bills and giving out toys. Come on, boy, the Black Santa Claus in March, amen. We thank God for you blessing us, amen, amen. My goodness, it's it's giving time. It's giving time, amen. Just so y'all know, I'm glad. Oh yeah, man, it's giving time. We just. We're going to just show you a video because some people might not know who we are. So can you just show them the video you all have together and I'll come back and talk. Hey everybody, how you doing? This is Dr. Willard Maxwell Jr., the pastor of New Beach Grove Baptist Church. And I just want to thank you all for all of your giving. My goodness, your giving has helped us so, so very much. Those who are members of New Beach Grove, those who are friends, those who are partners, and those who just watch us online and help us out. Thank you so much. We're still keeping the kids after school, partnering with the Boys and Girls Club. It only costs $25 for the entire school year for them to be able to come after school and be taken care of up until, I believe, 6 p.m. So we're keeping our kids safe because most of the time when I had to put someone out of school, if I, if I had to expel them as a principal or assistant principal, it, it was something that happened after school. It was something that happened when they were unsupervised off campus. And so I'm big on keeping kids safe. I'm big on making sure 
that we have a safe place for kids to go after school so that even though their parents can't be there, we can be their guardians and their safety net to make sure they don't get in trouble. Because after school, someone may get pregnant, someone may get shot, someone may get killed, someone may get into a fight, someone may try drugs for the first time, someone may lose their virginity. We want to make sure that we're there to be the village that helps take care of your kid and your giving helps us do that. Thank you all so much. Hey, Amen. We thank you all so much. And even now, we still keep the homeless from November to March um, because of your giving. Hey, Amen. It's, 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 it's a lot of stuff we do. And like, I'm, I'm joking with these people that go to multiple churches. Hey, Amen. But, but on a serious note, they go to different churches, but they still come here and partner with us. Come on, somebody. We partner with different churches. We partner with people around the community because if it were not for your giving, we would have never been able to do what we did. We were feeding the kids after school, when COVID was going on. And then finally, because we were giving so much, you all were helping us so much. Finally, the school system of, of Newport News and Pocosin and, and the Virginia uh, Food Bank, they, they began to work together and began to send the kids breakfast, lunch, and dinner because they were here all night. Hey, come on, somebody. But you, because it was costing us a good 3000 something dollars a week or something to keep them and a good ten, fifteen thousand dollars to take care of the homeless and we just stepped out on faith. Amen. We stepped out on faith and you all helped us because I know some of you all are here and even though you are part of other churches, your pastors have helped us. I, I remember I was on live in Six Mount Zion. He came on live with me. I pulled him on FaceTime and he said on Facebook live with me and he began to say what he was going to do to help us and he helped us Pastor Bishop, Pastor Barber until, come on somebody, the partners came. I don't know about you, but when you do real ministry and you sow your seed in good ground, come on somebody, you're going to reap a harvest. God is going to give you a good measure blessing, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Remember, he told the widow woman, he said, go get some pots, not a few. Go get as many as you can, and the oil never ran out. The only reason the oil stopped flowing was because the pots ran out. Y'all didn't, didn't catch that. Only reason the oil stopped flowing is because the pots ran out. The oil did not run out. The vessels did. But when you sow in the New Beast Grove, come on, somebody, you have vessels overseas that you're pouring in. You have kids right here that you're pouring in. You have the homeless right across the street, right over in the other building you're pouring in. You're pouring in to so many different ministries and people. So when you begin to plant here, your seed is multiplied. Come on, somebody. How many people know? How many people know this? Again, I've said it before at my church. How many people know you can see how many seeds are in an apple? but you don't know how many apples are in a seed. Oh, y'all don't hear me. You can open up an apple and see if it's three or four seeds in there or two seeds or how many seeds, but when you plant that seed, you don't know how many apple trees it's going to produce. So no gift is too small, no gift is too big, but the more seeds you scatter, come on somebody, the more of a harvest you reap. Some of you all, I need you to take this back to your own church if you don't have it. But you need to understand this right here. <laughs> you will never outgive God. You will never outgive God. But what you need to understand is that your job is not your source. Your job is to give you seeds to plant in fertile ground so God can give you a good measure blessing, press down, shaking together, and running over so he can multiply your seed. So, so some of you are wondering, how in the world have I, when I started tithing, did my money last longer when I kept all my money? Because God is never going to let you outgive him. When you give back to God what God has asked you to give unto him, he will bless you. Again, this conference is called Overflow. Come on, somebody. It's called Overflow. That's why I didn't call no shabby preachers. I didn't call anybody who has just started up. I called powerful men and women of God who was going to div rightly divide the word of truth and plant into you. Come on, somebody. A seed that's going to cause you to multiply. That's what I want to be able to do. When people looked at me like, why you call this person and that person? How you going to pay for it? I'm like, I'm going to get it out of the pockets of the people. <laughs> Give me the 100 because I need you to help this go on because these men and women of God who come, how many people say, you know, you're supposed to give honor where honor is due? Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. 
You, you, you don't just call men and women of God over here like a Dr. Pointer or a, 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 Byron, a Prince of Praise, Byron Cage. You don't call them and, and don't give, give them a good gift because the Bible says those who shepherd well deserve, come on somebody, a double portion. And I'm borrowing Dr. Pointer right now so him to shepherd us well and give us a word. And what I'm telling you is this. When you plant your seed in good ground, God is going to give back to you more than you gave him. Can I take it that? Do you understand that? Do you understand that your seed, even when you plant it here, newbies grow may not write you a check back, but your seed will grow somewhere. He said he'll open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing you won't have room to receive. I don't know about you, but I want to overflow. How many people want to overflow? I'm believing it. I want it right now. In fact, can I talk, who was here last, who was here, to, not last week, but who was here when Jamal Bryant was here? What, what, what did he tell us? He said, hurry up who? He told us to tell God to hurry up. But he also said, how can you tell God to hurry up if you ain't planting a seed in there? Oh, y'all missed that. <laughs> you, 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 you tell FedEx to hurry up, they ain't gonna hurry up unless you get them some more money, right? I ain't trying to be funny. It's, it's real. I know some people are going to get offended, but I'm not here to try to please and sugarcoat anything. I don't care when people be on my page. They, they've been calling me the devil, Dr. Pointer, because we're talking about abundance. These folks I don't even know call me the devil, said God going to come flip the tables over, and we ain't even selling nothing, Doc. What table we got in here? Ain't nothing in here but chairs. But they began to come online and say how the Jesus was going to flip the tables over because of what we're doing. No, what we're doing is we're stirring up the gift and preparing our hearts to receive an overflow. Amen? Amen? So I know I'm not saying anything that your pastors have not been saying at, at your churches that you go to, but I'm telling you right now, if you plant in this ground, it's good ground. And the oil will not run out. It's just the vessels. So how many vessels are you going to pour into? You're pouring into hundreds of vessels when you pour in here because we do so many different ministries around the world. We built churches in other countries. We, we've helped other people dig boreholes in Wales. We, we, we built a school in Pocock, Africa. We've done so many things. Why? Because we use what you give us well. I'm, I'm going to tell you how this. See, I, I know I got this hot sweater on, but I'm hot body anyway. And, and the Bible says there's a hotter place in hell. He said, be careful of those who become teachers, right? Because he said that your, your judgment will be more harsh than other folk. He ain't talking about haters. He's talking about him. So if I get up here and lie to you, and you don't, don't worry about me lying to you, because if I do with the money what I'm not supposed to, it's a hotter place in hell, and I definitely won't have this sweater on. I ain't trying to go to hell for nobody, not even myself. So I'm letting you know, listen to what the man of God is telling you right now. Plant your seed in good ground so God can give you a blessing. Amen? You can give through Givelify. You can give text, text to give, cash app. You can walk down and, 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 and give when the ushers come and, and bring the baskets. It's also a way to give by credit card as well outside in the, in the lobby area. If you don't want to go to the machine, we have uh, trustees that have a machine back there that can, that can hand it to you. We're going to save your seat. Amen. So don't worry about when you get up. We're going to save your seat. Amen. Amen. Now, if you don't get nothing, we're going to take it. No, it's playing. No, seriously, though, you can give to those different ways. Of course, you can give by cash. Those online, you can go to newbeesgrove.org slash give, and all the different giving platforms are right there. If you go to Givelify right now on your phones, if you're in the house, New Beach Grove will come up. Amen. If you're at home, you will see the New Beach Grove logo. Amen. Lord, I thank you so much for all these givers. Whatever seed they have, multiply it, Lord. Give them a good measure blessing, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Why? Because you said that we give unto you, you give it back to us. Lord, right now, when they give this gift, I want them to give, and you make them have a spirit of Jacob that say they won't let you go until you bless them. Lord, I believe that when, you, when they plant in this ground in this overflow conference, you shall honor them. You shall honor what they give. Show them right now, suddenly, a blessing once they bring it to the altar. In the name of Jesus, we do pray. Amen. Amen. All those who are able, if you would please stand. Please stand, all who are able. And amen. We're going to... 
They'll tell y'all where to go. Before I introduce a preach, I gotta recognize some pastors. First of all, security, y'all ain't doing no good job. <laughs> now I told y'all, First Baptist East End, I, I was already messing with them. Now they pastor then came in here, you know what I'm saying? He got that gangster sweater on, so you know he's coming to cause problems. Amen. Anyway, we give honor to Dr. Jamar Jones. Go ahead, amen. The First Baptist East End, amen. We give honor to Pastor Willie Gauls, a new pastor, amen, new, new pastor of Philippi Baptist Church, amen, and Jesse James Simon, I already told you he's a killer, amen, <laughs> over at the Worship Works, amen, he know it, oh, that's another W, the Word, what, the Word Works Worship Center, look at that, WWW, boy, that's Wrestle, WrestleMania, baby, we ready, amen, we got, brother, we got, Minister Eric Battle, come on somebody, our you pastor, amen. He takes me one day and said, I'm too old to be the you pastor, I'm going to go take another job, amen. Now we just thank God, <laughs> now we just thank God for him, man, for, for growing into doing other things and doing bigger jobs at other churches and what he's doing. We thank God for blessing us with him, amen, and him being here, amen. And we got the Bishop Samuel Stallings in the house, amen, amen, amen. We got the gangsters out here, amen. You know, he called me, I'm gonna make an offer you can't refuse. I'm gonna need to borrow your youth pastor twice a month. And I said, yes, Godfather, yes, Godfather. <laughs> but we thank, we thank God for him. And I just think a man of God that be having it in order. Come on, somebody. Cause so many people are trying to take your people behind the scenes, amen. Instead of coming to you and honoring you and saying, hey, we want to do this, we want to do that. So I can't help but respect you, man of God. Thank you so much for taking care of Reverend Walden and growing him up as well over there in the D.C. area and giving him exposure. We thank God for the partnership we have. How many people know churches need to learn how to work together? Huh? 
Huh? Church need to learn how to work together. Can I tell you who work together better than anybody? Demons. Demons work together well. When the, when, the, when, the, when, the, when the man was in the dungeon, well, in, 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 out in the grave sites, just breaking chain, what he said, we, it's many of us, we are legion. We are, are many, but we are what? One. Demons. If somebody talking about you, you know it's at least two people, because the money, people don't work by themselves. It's always a group of them. But we want to walk around here like Superwoman and, super, and, and Wonder Woman, Superman and Wonder Woman, act like we could do everything by ourselves. God was letting us know you need to work together like the demons. He said, when two or more of you gather in my name, come on, somebody, I'm in the midst. Come on, somebody. That's why I call a Dr. Pointer. That's why I call a Byron Cage. That's why I call a Bishop Stallings. That's why I call a Jamar Jones. Why? Because all of us together will multiply and take the city and the nation and the land. It's too many churches in competition with each other instead of working together. Everybody know you're going to be bigger than me. No, if we work together, we are all called to the fellowship of Jesus Christ. You ain't called the New Beast Grove. You ain't called the First Baptist Denver. You ain't called the First Baptist East East End. You're called to the gospel of Jesus Christ. And wherever God plants you, oh, come on, somebody. Y'all don't hear me. I need you to work together like demons. It don't be one demon on my page. It be several demons. But I need the church folk to come out the woodwork the same way the demons do and take the streets back. Come on, somebody. All these dope dealers on the corner. You better start evangelizing again. All these churches on the same street and folk getting killed because the churches don't want to work together. Y'all better hear me. What makes the warriors so strong, they put their shields together. They don't go out one person by a time. They put their shields together and they walk together in unison. And as long as somebody don't stray, the shield can't be broken. Oh, y'all don't hear me. It's time for the church to get their shields together and lock them together hand in hand and take the territory back from the devil. You, 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 you know what's really wrong with the church? The church played defense all the time. Now, I know they say defense wins games, but Peyton Manning would tell you that if you don't score, you ain't going to win. It said you're supposed to kick in the gates of hell. Come on, somebody. Kick in them school doors. Kick in them law enforcement doors. Kick in the hospital doors. Kick in. Oh, y'all don't hear me. If the church can band together and just walk. Oh. Ooh, if we could just walk together in the unison, if we could just cooperate with each other and be happy when the word worship center works, come on somebody, and be happy when Philippi gets blessed, and be happy when First Baptist East End gets blessed, and be happy when Bishop Stalling gets blessed, and be happy when Reverend Walden gets blessed, and be happy when Doc Christian gets blessed, and be happy when Dre gets blessed, and be happy when Maxwell gets blessed, and stop getting jealous. If the blessing is on your street, somebody better start shouting for your neighbor because if my neighbor getting blessed I'm ready for my blessing right now baby I'm not jealous of you I'm a shout for you because if I shout for you my God will give me an overflow if I celebrate you my God will honor me too much hate too much hate going on but I ain't the preacher. You got an eloquent preacher coming in the house. See, I ain't even trying to be intelligent because I know that Negro over there is articulate. I ain't, I can't compete with that. I just got to holler right now. Ah! <laughs> ah! <laughs> you know what I'm saying? This joker here poised. Uh, I remember when he preached, I was like, man, that half the minutes come, but when we preached at the same time, I'm like, I'm glad that Negro went after me. Amen. Well, the person I'm about to introduce is another than Dr. Philip. Come on, somebody, pointer. This man of God. Now, this joker must have been pastor since he was about two years old. He been pastor for 20 years, y'all. Come on, somebody. But they, you know how they say, I ain't trying to offend nobody, but they say black don't crack. Come on, somebody. 
Y'all see 51 years over there. Come on, somebody. You got 20 years over here, and they still look like they don't need no cane. Come on, somebody. <laughs> for for y'all dope addicts, I'm talking about a cane to walk with, not cocaine. I felt that spirit. <laughs> We ain't trying to do no lines over here. Amen. I'm just <laughs> Jesus. Let me get out of here. That spirit. Woo, Jesus. I'm... We rebuke you in the name of Jesus. See, I'm halfway joking, but I'm halfway serious at the same time. Amen. Right now, we bind any spirit of addiction right now in the name of Jesus when this man of God get up and speak, glory will come down in his house. And because the word of God is moving forward, people will be delivered. Come on, somebody. Spirits have going to be delivered today. Whatever ailment you came in here today with, you're not going to leave with it. God is ready to heal you. God is ready to deliver you. There's a new level of overflow because God can't bless you until he clean you out. God can't give an overflow until he get the mess out of you. Tell God, deliver me. Me right now in the name of Jesus. Oh, there's a power in this house today. There's an anointing of healing in this house today. There's an anointing of deliverance in here today in the name of Jesus. Whatever you came in with, you're not going to take it back with you. Leave it at the altar in the name of Jesus. Oh, I feel it. I feel it. I feel the glory of God in this house. I feel it right now. I don't know if you feel it, but I feel it in my belly right now. Somebody's about to be delivered. I'm not, I'm not trying to preach, but there's a spirit of deliverance in this house. God has rebuked me when I was sitting down, and I know that when I walk in, there's a spirit of deliverance in this house. And if you came in here with an ailment, you're not going to leave with it today. You're going to be delivered today. Oh, no, we're going to say hurry up, God. But we talking about hurry up, God, deliver us because he can't pack a blessing on top of your mess. He got to get that mess out of you. He got to get that chafe out of you. He got to press it out. The anointing does not flow and does not fall on you. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me. It sounds good, but it's not theologically sound. The spirit springs up out of you like rivers of living water when you're crushed and when you're broken and when God reduces you down to your least common denominator so he can multiply you. They're the spirit of deliverance in this house. And God said, you shall not leave the same way you came. But you have to come with a spirit of expectation. I don't know what this man of God going to preach, but the Bible said that Jesus tried to heal people and he marveled at the unbelief because they were too familiar with him. I think why God, God told me I can't call y'all. I get it right now. I can't call y'all because the city folk too familiar with us. And sometimes when we so nice and we so accessible, people don't understand the anointing you walk in. Oh, y'all don't hear me. And Jesus tried to heal the folk, but he marveled at unbelief. They said, hold on, ain't that Mary little boy? Ain't that Joseph little boy? Ain't, ain't, that, ain't, that, ain't that Mary's brother over there? Ain't that Josiah's little brother? Why, how, where he get this anointing from? They didn't deny the anointing was there. Where he get this from? And so God has called people from D.C. God has called people from Arkansas. God called people from Atlanta. God called people from Philly. God called people from Baltimore. He called people all around the, the nation to come here to give a word of impartation to you. But you have to come with expectation. Jesus could only heal a few and he marveled at their unbelief. The problem is not going to be in the preacher. The problem is going to be on what type of ground is your heart. I need your heart to be ready to receive the man of God and walk in your overflow. Let me introduce the man of God. I've been talking too long, but for some reason, I just don't care. Don't, can I tell y'all something? I can't be nothing but me. I know somebody be like, how you joking and how you get serious? I just be me. Don't try to be nobody else. If you don't like me, this ain't the place for you. Amen. 
But I do know right now, whether you like me or not, get your heart ready. Because God wants to deliver you whether you like me or not. Because it don't matter if you like me or not, God loves you. And he's come and prepare your heart with expectation. Dr. Philip Porner is the senior pastor of St. Mark Baptist Church, one of the largest Baptist churches in the state of Arkansas. <clears throat> Raised in the greater Washington, D.C. area, Pastor Porner will become a fourth-generation Baptist. No wonder, Negro, you preach so good. It's like a fourth-generation preacher on both sides, mama's side preaching, daddy's side preaching. Lord, have mercy. I might take off Sunday, too, because I ain't coming behind you. Amen. Having now served as senior pastor for 20 years. Now, this joke look like he's been pastoring for 20 years. Hallelujah. You must got some good members. They ain't getting none of your hair gray or nothing, but you got some good members. Hallelujah. Pastor Pointer's journey as a pastor began in October 2002 with an assignment at St. John Baptist Church in Alexandria, Virginia. In conjunction with fostering the spiritual growth and advancement of St. John, Pastor Porner earned a Master of Divinity degree with honors from the Samuel DeWitt Proctor School of Theology at Virginia Union University. Amen. After 10 rewarding years of leadership at St. John, he received his next card, call and God blessed him and brought him to his current assignment at St. Mark Baptist Church. Shortly after uniting uh, with St. Mark, Pastor Porter completed his doctorate of ministry degree from the United Theological Seminary in Dayton, uh, in Dayton, Ohio. He currently leads a doctoral cohort at United for a collective of doctoral candidates. Now, let's go on. He done done a whole bunch of things. He done a lot of things. But one thing I can tell you, I met this man of God. What year was it? That was 2016 or something? When we preached at the Hampton Ministers Conference late night, when they were saying the young preachers coming up, they wanted to give us a chance. This man of God can preach. Come on, somebody. They gave him a 15-minute limit, and he preached the whole Bible in 15 minutes. Now, you can take however many 15 minutes you want here. You got three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, fifteen 15 minutes. However you want to go, you just bring the word of God. This man of God has grown a church. You know this man of God by his fruit. This man of God is a servant leader. This man of God takes care of his community. This man of God has studied. This man of God has a real doctor degree. He is a real reverend doctor. Come on, somebody. This man is educated. He devised the word of truth. He's theologically sound. He's He's trained. He said it to show himself approved. The next voice that you will hear is the great Dr. Philip Pointer, baby. Hear ye him after the Prince of Praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I, I promise I'm not going to be real long because I know you want to hear the word of God. Amen. How many of y'all ready to hear the word of the Lord tonight? The Lord is going to speak in this place. There's a simple song. It just talks about the majestic power of our God. And when we praise him, the word says he dwells in the midst of our praises. He dwells when you say hallelujah, when your hands are lifted to him, when you open up your mouth to him. I'm ready. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Can someone just lift your hands to heaven tonight as we just sing this song of worship? How I worship, how I worship. Come on, sing it tonight. Majesty, majesty. Come on, tell me. How I bless you, Jesus. How I bless you. Come on, tell him tonight. For you alone, Jesus. For you alone. You are worthy of my praise. He's worthy of your praise tonight. Come on, let's tell him again. Let me hear you see a congregation. Majesty. Majesty. Oh, 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 how I worship. How I worship. Come on, sing it tonight. Oh, 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 oh Majesty. Majesty. Hallelujah. How I bless you, Lord. How I bless you. Come on, tell him. For you alone, for you alone. For you. 
My name is Jesus, the Christ, because all my life you have been faithful. Hallelujah, Jesus. All my life you have been so, so good, Jesus. And every breath that I am made. Come on, someone sing this. Oh, I will sing. Of the goodness is yes, tell this and your goodness is running after it's running after me. Come on, see that one time, y'all. Your goodness is running. Your goodness is running after, running after me. Running Come on, see it again. Your goodness is running after me. Yes, Lord. It's running after. Come on, one more time. Oh, your goodness, your goodness is running out. It's running out. Jesus, 
Yes, Lord. Jesus. Jesus. There is something about that name. You're like the fragrance after the rain. Let the worshipers in this room, as I'm getting ready to sit down, say, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Let all heaven and earth proclaim. What are we proclaiming? The King. They shall all pass away, but there's something up, but there's something about, but there's something about that. the Lord. Well, help me pray about our time in the Word of God tonight and let's ask the Lord to bless us through His truth. God, we approach you tonight calling on that name that is above every name. That marvelous, powerful name. That incredible name. That life-giving name. That devil-defeating name. Cancer-eradicating name. name at which every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. The only name given among men whereby we can be saved. We come in that name tonight just to say thank you for another opportunity to gather in your holy place with your holy people, to praise your holy name and to hear your holy word. Lord, I confess afresh that the task given to me is too large for me. And so I stand in desperate need of you. Would you pour fresh oil on my head? Give me clarity of thought and precision of speech. Use me as an instrument in your hand. And grant all of us who are both in this place physically and in the virtual sanctuary, give us listening ears receptive hearts, and most importantly, responsive lives. Help us to leave this place better than we were when we came. Arrest our attention tonight, rebuke any potential distraction, and help us to be focused on the scripture as it reveals your son, Jesus Christ. And as we thank you for what you have done, we anticipate and praise you in advance for what we believe you're about to do trust that we'll be better than we leave than we were when we came we thank you for these things and all things and count them done by faith because we pray them in the strong and wonderful name of your son who is our savior and the believers together said amen and amen well if you love the lord and you clap those hands one more time if you love the name jesus amen 
honor and praise to our great God and to God's Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior, the Holy Spirit, comforter and guide. Thank you for standing. You may be seated to those who make up the leadership and fellowship of this church. And would you help me to celebrate your pastor? What a gift to the body he is, Dr. <laughs> Willard Maxwell. Thank you, Pastor, for this invitation and opportunity uh, to share with you and with New Beach Grove in these series of services. It's my great joy uh, to be a part of this, uh, this season of revival in the life of this incredible church. I want to thank God for all of the pastors and preachers present tonight uh, who are with us, those uh, who've come from near and far. It's good to see so many friends, uh, so many comrades in the gospel, uh, and all of you, my father's children. Uh, I want you to come with me tonight to a small Old Testament prophetic book called Haggai. H-A-G-G-A-I, Haggai. It's a very small prophetic book in the Old Testament. The second chapter of that book, beginning at verse number one. Concluding our reading at verse number nine. Haggai chapter two, verses one through nine. Haggai two, one through nine, the CSB, the Christian Standard Bible, translates the original Hebrew this way. On the 21st day of the seventh month, the word of the Lord came through the prophet Haggai. Speak to Zerubbabel, son of Shealtiel, governor of Judah, to the high priest Joshua, the son of Jehoshadak, and to the remnant of the people who is left among you who saw this house in its former glory. How does it look to you now? Doesn't it seem to you like nothing by comparison? Even so, be strong, Zerubbabel. This is the Lord's declaration. Be strong, Joshua, son of Jehoshadak, high priest. Be strong, all you people of the land. This is the Lord's declaration. Work, for I am with you. The declaration of the Lord of armies. This is the promise I made to you when you came out of Egypt and my spirit is present among you. Don't be afraid. For the Lord of armies says this. Once more in a little while I am going to shake the heavens and the earth, the sea and the dry land. I will shake all the nations so that the treasures of all the nations will come and I will fill this house with glory, says the Lord of armies. The silver and gold belong to me. This is the declaration of the Lord of armies. The final glory of this house will be greater than the first, says the Lord of armies. I will provide peace in this place. This is the declaration of the Lord of armies. Once again, the final glory of this house will be greater than the first. I want to tag our time in this text tonight, and I'm not going to hold you long. I'm almost done preaching. Uh, but I want to just simply tag it what may seem to be a trite title, but please uh, don't judge me too harshly. Just help somebody out next to you and tell them, neighbor, the best is yet to come. You may be seated if you're standing. That's all. I want to talk tonight about the best is yet to come. It's a scholarly article written in 2016 by a cacophony of collaborators titled The Social Contingency of Momentary Subjective Well-Being. It's the title of the article. It's the social contingency of momentary subjective well-being. What is that? It's a simple study on the science of low expectations. The conclusion of the study simply 
suggests that the easiest path to happiness is to live life with low expectations. That the idea being that despair is often the result of disappointment. And disappointment is the result of expectations. The suggestion then is to avoid disappointment and to keep oneself from despair. The simplest thing to do is to lower, to lessen, and to lighten our expectations. From a, an earth terrestrial common point of view, this seems to make all the sense in the world. But the reality is there is a spiritual, scriptural alternative to living life with low expectations. It's to realize that it's not the expectations that are the issue, but rather it's where those expectations are placed. I think tonight that many people live with despair that comes from disappointment, not because we expect the wrong things, but we put our expectations in the wrong people. I, I, I want to suggest that there is a way to live life that is enjoyable and fulfilling. It's simple. It's to stop expecting too much from people and stop expecting too little from God. And so friends, the challenge before us tonight is to intentionally lean in, intentionally reassign the energy of our expectations to ensure that when we live life, we can live with high expectations, but we need to put our high expectations in the hands and at the feet of our high and holy God because people at their best are still mostly disappointing. Don't, don't, don't say man too loud because you may be in here with your wife or your husband or you may be in here with your friend, but just blink at me if you understand that, that people at their best are are, are still mostly disappointing because our frustration in life comes from trying to find a sense of happiness, completion, and fulfillment in the interpersonal relationships that we have with one another in the job, in the money, in the educational attainment, in accruing possessions, social standing, and status, when the reality is the only way to find true fulfillment is to explore and then walk in the reason for which you were born and the reason for which you have been redeemed. It is your work with God, your, your life with God, your relationship with God that creates that sense of fulfillment. And friends, that's what this little passage is all about tonight. It is about reassigning expectation energy. It, it is to take it out of what the people are seemingly accomplishing um, from an earthly perspective and to place it on the higher level of what God is doing through what they are accomplishing. Let, let me see if I can make this plain. This, this book of Haggai is written to a recently released and being restored people of God who were the subjects of a season of displacement from their promised land. It, it was 586 BC when Nebuchadnezzar and Babylon came in, ransacked Jerusalem, overthrew uh, the sitting king, and took the best and the brightest young Jews out of their homeland and transported them to Babylon. The promise of God was that they would be 70 years in Babylon. That's 586 BC. The temple ultimately is going to be uh, rebuilt in 516, but the initial release happens around 538. 
lean in, church. Here's what happens. They were released and they were being restored, but the problem was restoration was a process even though the release happened in an instant. Uh, they were released in 538, but restoration took some time because restoration involved the rebuilding of a torn down temple. Solomon had built one of splendor and magnificence overlaid with gold and precious stones, but they now had nothing. They began to rebuild. They lay a foundation and then the enemies around them and the problems within the community caused the people to all go to their several several spaces, several places to sit down, to become uninvolved, unenthusiastic. They started to live, are y'all in here, with low expectations. So God sends the prophet Haggai to tell them to get up, get out of that space, that, that head space where they are stuck in the in that space of low expectations to reclaim some sense of 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 of, of expectation that God is up to something, to re reclaim the sense that, that tomorrow can be brighter than today, that though things have been torn down, they can be rebuilt, that though there are enemies around them, they have a God who is above them, that even though culture seems to be falling apart, God is actually pulling everything together, and when they start rebuilding, God sends the prophet back to say, listen, I've got some good news to you for you. You, I'm going to take these meager efforts of yours and magnify your meager efforts by putting glory on top of your I'm going to place a glory on your ingenuity I'm going to place a glory on your work I'm going to put glory on your intent I'm going to put glory on your hammers on your nails on your saw on your measuring tape so that when you start building what I've told Told you to build you're not just building a building you are building a testament to divine glory and church that makes this passage a believers only passage a builders only passage it it says that expectations are only in the purview of people who are participating in divine purpose. That is people who are working on something they know God has assigned them to and when I'm working on what I know God has assigned me to, it may seem mundane and it may seem common and it may seem small and it may seem insignificant and it may seem unimportant and it may seem unimpressive but when God puts glory on the work I'm doing we will then see God's manifested uh, presence make a difference through the work of my hands church um, uh, this, this is all I'm trying to say really it, it's that God's presence with us and promises to us ensure that we can always look forward with holy expectations for a better tomorrow. The text wants us then to live and serve with faith-filled expectancy. And it's going to teach us how to steward expectation well. Do y'all have a few minutes? Let me, I, I waited on y'all. Will y'all wait on me? Let's try it again. It's going to teach us how to steward expectations well. So I'm reassigning my expectations. I'm taking them off of you because you can't make me happy anyway. You can't provide for me anyway. You, you can't give me a sense of satisfaction anyway. So I'm placing them at the feet and in the hands of the only one who can fulfill my expectations and when I grab when I get when I gain those expectations again I've got to steward them so that I don't let expectations leak from the holes in my life and fall to the ground wasted I've got to have a container a reservoir and airtight seal on my expectation so that when I live life through the doldrums and the dark places and the disappointments that inevitably come with being a part of the human experience something within me uh, 
says it's bad right now, but it won't be bad always. Your grandmama is pushing me in my back. She told me to tell you, I'm so glad that trouble don't last always. How do I steward my expectations? Uh, it's real simple. It's real simple. I'm almost embarrassed to preach it. Um, it, 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 it begins when I learned how to manage the past. It, it continues when I learned how to maximize my present. And, and it, it consummate, consummates when I learn how to move on to the future. I know. I know. I know. I know it's simple. But that's, that's, that's what's happening in the text. It, it, listen to him. Um, manage your past. Ma manage your past verses one through three. Uh, he says, how many of y'all were here that saw the old house? That, that, that's those who were alive at the time of the destruction of Solomon's temple. There were some people who remembered the splendor and, and, and the grandeur of Solomon's temple. But the problem was this new one they were building, um, the footprint, the, the square footage was smaller physically than Solomon's temple was. And, 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 and they, they, they got so disappointed. Ezra chapter 3 says of them that, that, that some people shouted when they laid the foundation, but other people wept and the noise of the shouting and the noise of the weeping commingled and became indistinguishable. I've learned that everybody shouting ain't shouting for the right stuff. And, 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 and Haggai addresses it head on and he says, the problem is uh, you are comparing the size of the new to the old uh, rather than comparing the significance of the old to the new. Try it one more time. You are, you are looking at square footage and you're not looking at spiritual impact. Listen, church, the reality is that nostalgia is the enemy of vision. Um, um, uh, uh, they're, they're broken hearts, they're unfulfilled dreams, their expectations and disappointments, they are missed opportunities, stuff you've lost it, stuff you've wasted because of mismanagement or lack of gratitude, money, time, opportunities, and some of us are stuck on a fixed point of time, a season we wish we could change, we wish we could change life and not waste all the money we wasted, we wish we could change the way we managed the business when we started it. We wish we could change and not date Ray Ray and Sue Bell. We wish we could change things if I had just done better in school, if I had just started trying to work out sooner, if I had just remembered what grandmama told me before it was too late. Church, the problem is there is no potential in your past. There are only lessons in your past. And and God is not about to allow you to rewind time and rewrite your history. But what you can do is redeem your time. You can see your past for what it is. Something that God used and superintended to bring you to this fixed point in time that you have right now. I don't know who I'm talking to, but God sent me to tell you your best days are not in in your past your best blessings are not in your past your best you is not in your past I don't have time I don't have time I don't have time I don't have time J. Wall if I had time Bishop if I had time I would tell you that there is a reason for the specific dating of, of the text the 21st day of the seventh month this church is the seventh day of the Feast of Pentecost for the Jews, uh, or Feast of Tabernacles rather, Feast of Tabernacles uh, for the Jews, seventh day of the Feast of Tabernacles for the Jews. The, the Feast of Tabernacles was a commemoration, lean in, of, of their journey through the wilderness when they did not have fixed houses to live in. Uh, they only had tents or tabernacles. Tabernacles are temporary places. It's a feast to commemorate how God took care of them. Watch me. They're looking back at the old temple when they should be looking back further than the temple to the tabernacles. Because before they had a temple, God was taking care of them in the tents and the tabernacles. Ah, yeah. Some of us are in love with a season. 
in our past rather than correctly assess our past not based on a particular season that we enjoyed or that we miss emotionally but to see the totality of God's hand and care and faithfulness over the course of our entire history that is to say God didn't start being good when you got some money God was good when you were broke and eating pork and beans for dinner God was good when you were eating tuna out the can with no mayonnaise. God was good when you were eating oodles and noodles in college. God was good when you were barefoot. I wish y'all would help me out in here. Lived at the end of a dirt road. God didn't start being good when you moved out to the suburbs and got a McMansion. God was good to you before you had labels and designers and luxury automobiles. God has been good all of the time. And what we are to do with our past is not to get caught in a fixed point but to be thankful for the totality of God's care through every point of history in our lives uh, let me, uh, I, 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 we, we, we drove uh, uh, Dr. Maxwell we drove I, I drove uh, with my grandfather my, my grandfather just passed last year my granddad and I and some other family members dr drove from Washington, D.C. to Palo Alto, California one year. I know, I told the Lord never again, if he give me life and health and strength, never again. But one of the stops, one of the stops was, was, was a stop at Yellowstone Park where we stopped to see that famous gushing geyser, Old Faithful. And the sign said, Old Faithful will erupt at 4.15 p.m. We got there a little early, we stood there, and uh, we waited, and 4.15 came, and Old Faithful didn't erupt. 4.20, still nothing. 4.25, no noise, no gurgling, no sounds. 4.30, 4 45, 5 o'clock, about 5, 11 or 12. We started to hear some gurgling, some rumbling, some, some, some smattering of, 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 of hot water began. And then all of a sudden, whoosh, Old Faithful erupted. What, what struck me as, as, as remarkable in those moments is that uh, nobody moved. Nobody, nobody moved. Nope, nobody got upset. Nobody started saying, I guess Old Faithful ain't faithful. Nobody got concerned. Everybody just stood around, crossed their arms, folded their legs, sipped their water, and waited because they knew if Old Faithful didn't show up at 415, if they just waited around, Old Faithful was going to erupt after a while. And that's all your past is designed to teach you. It's designed to teach you that God is faithful. And no matter what comes, Comes, no matter what goes, no matter who comes, no matter who goes, no matter what the economy does, no matter if there's an orange man in the White House or an old man in the White House, no matter who the governor is, no matter who's in control of the Senate, my God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus because he is faithful. Oh. I got to learn how to properly manage my past. But, but wait, wait, wait. I also got to learn how to maximize my present. It's verses 4 and 5. Um, here's, here's what God says do. God says in verse 4 and 5, here's what I want you to do. Be strong, two imperatives. Be strong and work. Yeah, let's try it again. Be strong and work. Uh, for I am with you. Um, I, I try to teach St. Mark, church I pastor in Little Rock, um, how to shout on reading the Bible. Let's try it again. Let's try it again. Uh, be strong, all you people of the land. This is the Lord's declaration. Work, for I am with you. I, yeah, I, I, I know why you're not shouting. I know why you're not shouting. You're not shouting because you don't know that Haggai 
keeps preaching to the same audience, Zerubbabel, who is the political leader, Joshua, who is the spiritual leader, and then to the remnant. He keeps talking to the remnant of the people because when they got out of Babylon, when they released um, by Cyrus, king of Persia, initially, um, there are a couple of million Jews that can go back to Jerusalem and rebuild, but out of those two million or so, only 52,000 choose to do it. So, so, so here they are having to do extra work because some of the people who are supposed to help them ain't showing up. Let me try it one more time. Uh, they're, they're having to do extra work because uh, some of the support that's supposed to be there is AWOL, absent without leave. Some of the people that should be by their side, uh, some of the folk that should have hammers and nails and saws in their hand uh, are living lives of ease and comfort uh, and there's only a small amount, relatively speaking, uh, of people that are actually engaged in the rebuilding exercise and church one of the issues that people have today is that we came out of COVID expecting everybody to jump up step up stand up and be counted only to discover that some people got comfortable in COVID and decided to stay where they were but God sent me by to tell you you're not to lament who ain't helping you you're not to lament who's not there you're not to cry over the relationships of folk you helped them and when it was your turn they abandoned you why because God says the work does not depend on the assistance of others because I am with you and this is what I've been telling you since I brought you out of Egypt all of your life is a testimony to the fact that I am with you and I don't know who I'm talking to here but you looking for people to co-sign for you somebody to be a reference on your resume somebody to open a door for you somebody to give you a chance and an opportunity and you saying God I ain't got nobody God said yes you do I am with you I can whisper in the underwriter meeting and tell me to give it to you without a co-signer I can kick down doors that men are closed in your face I can do what doctors can't do and heal you miraculously I am with you why do you think you ain't gone crazy yet why do you think you're still alive why do you think you still have breath in your body and strength in your limbs you ain't cute smart or lucky I am with you gotta work I said you gotta work there's something assigned for you to do there is a task that you must complete there is an anointing that must be worked out there are people that need your help and your hand you gotta work he says don't don't think you're doing this by your by yourself I'm I'm with you uh, uh, it, it's that it's that father and son Walking down the road, uh, Jones, that, um, that came on a boulder in the middle of the road. He couldn't, they couldn't get around it. And, and Dad said, son, I think you can move that boulder if you use all your strength. That boy got behind that boulder. He started pushing and pressing, straining, and the boulder didn't move. It didn't even rock a little bit. He said, no, son, use... All your strength. He got un under it again, got lower, got a better stance, dug his feet in the ground and pushed and strained and pressed and, and, and began to sweat. His veins are bulging out of his head and his neck and his arms and his legs. Boulder didn't even move a little bit. He said, no, son, use... Oh, it's one more time he got up under it and he strained and pressed and tried and tears began to fall down his face and he said, Dad, I can't move it. He said, no, son, I told you to use all your strength. He said, Dad, I am using all my strength. He said, no, son, you're not using all your strength because you haven't asked me to help you yet. 
Some of y'all trying to raise children by yourself. You're trying to make life work by yourself. You ain't got nobody to call on, nobody to email, nobody to text, nobody following on social media. I'll come to tell you, you got somebody you can call on. What? A friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs about what? A privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pains we bear. Oh, because we don't care. I got to go now. Manage your past. Maximize your present. I'm through. Move on to your future. Ready? Ready? Here's what, here's what happened. Here's what happened. God said, rebuild the temple. They started rebuilding. They sat down for 14 years. God sends Haggai say, hey, I said rebuild the temple. They start rebuilding. But the problem is, the assignment on them requires resources from them that they don't have. They don't have, they don't have all the money or materials to finish the project. So, so, so God says, hey, here's what I want you to grab. The silver is mine. And the gold is mine. And I'm going to shake the heavens and the earth and the sea so that the treasures of all nations. Some translations say the desire of all nations. And some people try to spiritualize this text and make it a soteriological or eschatological promise about the first coming of the Lord Jesus Christ or the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. But this text is about getting the money you need. It's about, it's what it's about to do the work God has called you to do. In fact, it finds its fulfillment in Ezra chapter 6 when the king writes letters to their enemies to tell them to release to them the resources they need, both money and material, to build the house that God has called them to build. In church, all I'm trying to say to you is that God will release resources to those who are operating in divine purpose. If you start walking out God's will for your life, God will make folk that don't like you have to bless you. And people that ain't spiritual will sow into spiritual causes. And people that don't know Jesus will help you to proclaim him. Because God knows how to shake the nations and release the resources into your hand that you're going to need. Because God had a greater purpose for this temple. It's small now, but 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 history will say that uh, that that when 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 the Persians go out of power and the Grecians become uh, become become the world power and 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 through Alexander the Great and the expansion of the Greeks Greeks Empire then 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 Rome would come on the scene. That would be a revolt as it were, in, 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 in the intertestamental period between Malachi and Mark and Matthew. There, there, there would be a revolt and the Jews would try to rise up and so Rome would put over this region what we call vassal kings, a dynasty called the Herodian dynasty, Herod. The great, who was actually a son of Esau, not a son of Israel, an Edomite would come and Herod would take this footprint of the temple, this small one, and expand it and enlarge it so as to uh, placate and pacify the people so they would not revolt again. And it's in that place that a baby would be taken on his eighth day of life and circumcised. And when the priest asked his father, what are you going to call his name? That baby, that baby... That baby's name was called Jesus. The first time he sheds his blood was on the eighth day of his life at his bris in this temple. He then would come back at the age of 12 and teach and confound doctors having been left behind by his parents and family. His first um, public preaching ministry would be in this temple. 
it, it, it would then come to pass uh, that in uh, his 33rd year of life, having healed the sick and raised the dead uh, and opened blind eyes and unstopped deaf ears uh, and worked miracle, walked on water, feeding people in the desert with two fish and five loaves, 15 to 20,000 people in total after spitting on the ground, making miracle whip, putting it on a man's eyes, telling him to go wash and come back seeing he would show up in this temple again and he would turn over the tables of the money changers and say my house shall be called a house of prayer it's in this temple where he would be tried and convicted of blasphemy and he would be tried and convicted of treason it's in this temple that he would be whipped and beaten and spat on and marched out his blood would be on the floor of this temple that's why the text says the glory of this temple would be greater than the glory of Solomon's temple because Solomon's temple only had the blood of doves and bulls and goats and sheep but this temple had the blood of the very son of God and church all I'm trying to tell you is that wherever there is blood there is also glory would you wave at somebody and say neighbor my testimony is because blood is on my life glory is also on my life because blood is on my house glory is also on my house because blood is on my children glory is also on my children I got to leave you here now but would you turn I said turn ah, would you turn and tell somebody that God ensures that your best days are still in front of you because he will always lead you higher yeah in glory and I got to leave you here but can I testify to somebody until you get your expectations back stop walking around with your head hung down stop walking around with your face frowned up stop walking around with malice in your heart let your grudge go let the pain go let the disappointment go let the past go and say I'm looking forward to great things in the future do I have a witness here I got to leave you here but there was a man named Ira Stanfield whose wife left him at the zenith of his ministry and at the height of his popularity when he was trying to reconcile with her she was killed in a car accident and he never got to make peace with why she left him alone he went into a deep depression and thought about taking his own life but then the spirit whispered a song in his ear that sometimes we still sing he said I don't know about tomorrow I just live from day to day I don't borrow from its sunshine but its skies may turn to gray I, I don't worry over the future for I know what Jesus said and today he walks beside me for he knows what lies ahead many things about tomorrow I, I don't seem to understand but I know who holds tomorrow and I know 
he holds my hand. Now, good night, New Beach Grove, family and friends. But would you turn to somebody just one more time and say, neighbor, I got my expectation back. I believe that the best is still yet to come. In fact, I'm looking for a miracle. I expect, yeah, the impossible. I see the invisible. Feel the intangible. I got my expectation back. This too shall pass. I got my expectation back. All things are working together for my good. I got my expectation back. If God be for me, who can be against me? I got my expectation back. No weapon formed against me shall be able to prosper. I got my expectation back. And I wonder him who's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we ask or think i got my expectation back god shall wipe all tears from our eyes is there anybody here that's got some expectation we'll wave at somebody and say neighbor let me testify about what i feel tell them i got a feeling that everything is gonna be all right yes yeah yes yeah at one more person and say I got my expectation back my weeping may endure for a night but joy joy leave tonight but can I borrow your hand one more time can I get you to encourage somebody and say neighbor we're going home now but let me give you a quick pop quiz I got three questions I need three answers question number one is do you know him question number two is have you tried him Question number three is, ain't he all right? Ain't he all right? See ya! See ya! See ya!
My God. Oh, Jesus. I'm trying to make sure he finished. Come on. My God. Hey, you, 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 you know a Negro preacher. I grabbed the mic and I put it down like, no, nah, he ain't finished. Come on, somebody. You got to be sent to the spirit. I knew. Amen. Jesus. My God. Jesus. Jesus. But I, I don't know if you heard the word, but when I got here, I said, come with a spirit of expectation. Yeah, I don't know if you, did y'all hear me say that? We ain't talked. Jonathan been talking to him. I ain't talked to him yet because I had to do therapy and all this. Okay, y'all know I had a setback or whatnot. I ain't even talked to him. I said, you need to come with an expectation because if your heart is ready, you will receive. It's not going to be the prophet's fault. It's going to be our fault. And did he not just say you need to have a spirit of expectation? Y'all don't hear. Y'all got to let your ears, you got to have spiritual ears and hear in the spirit. It's not that God can't bless you. It's just you got to know. He said, your faith has made you whole. That's what he said, right? When, 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 the, when the people had the crippled man, they sent him down and, and threw the, they took the roof apart and put him down and said, he said, your, their faith has made you whole. When the lepers came to Jesus, he said, he, they said, he, he said, go, let your faith has made you whole. So it's not, can God do it? Is this that do you have the expectation that he can do it? Do you know he can do it? Do you really know he can do it? Because it's funny how we can say he bled, he died, and he got up, and we believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross and rose from the dead, but can't believe he can take care of our bills. You believe a man died. We don't, we, we don't, we believe that 100% our, in our heart ain't seen it. One at the tomb could, can't say we knew exactly what time he woke up, but we believe it with our hearts, right? So if you can believe that in your heart, believe that he can bless you. Come with a heart of expectation. My God. Oh, Jesus. My good, did he, let's get a man of God a hand clap, amen, amen. Now we give honor, we give honor where honor is due. If, if y'all want to give, you can give again if you want. I'm not going to raise an offering, but they can put the giving thing up there. If somebody want to give, you can give. I'm not going to raise an offering, but if you want to do it, if you feel like you have a heart of expectation and you want to sow, you can. The basket's down here. If you want to come, you can give on the way out because some of you all, you know, get here right after the offering. And I ain't want to cause you to miss anything. So I didn't want you to miss your blessing to be able to sow. Amen. I, right? So we, if it, no, no pressure, but you can give through those different ways. The Givelify text to give is a, it's a machine outside. Amen. And the benediction, it says you come because the benediction means the second blessing. And God honors you when you wait for your second blessing. I'm not going to close out my president. The president of the Virginia Baptist State Convention is here, Dr. Darren Brandon. I'm going to call him up here to do the benediction. Amen. He said, no, you still the boss even in my house. You're embarrassing me, but it's all good. I'm just playing with you. These Negro be so serious. Jesus. Oh, God. Oh, God. Y'all just crazy. <laughs> Y'all so Y'all, see, you know why some of us can't get blessed? You're too sensitive. You, you're too sensitive. The world, I'm telling you, the world has gotten too soft. The Bible says you'll receive a hundredfold in this lifetime with persecution. And some of y'all can't even take a joke. How can you take the hater? Some of y'all, if you can't learn how to handle the cubicle hate. Now, if somebody, if you're in a cubicle and somebody hate on you, you can't handle that. You definitely can't handle the front office hate. Because ain't but two people hating on you in a cubicle. <laughs> anyway, let's stand, let's stand for the, 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 the blessing. And can we give a hand clap as well for the Prince of Praise? <laughs> Hallelujah. Hello. One of the greatest psalmists of our times and of all time, this man of God 
has, 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 can move so many mountains with his voice. Amen. Man, that speaker sounds like it's about to die with that little beat, or is it the beat? Is it the speaker or the beat? Yeah, it's a raggedy beat, DJ. <laughs> Just like it's, it got COVID. This speaker got COVID. I need y'all to get a mask for that speaker. Amen. <laughs> I'm going to walk over here. <laughs> that beat. Anyway, now may the words of our mouths. I know that's for me. <laughs> may the words of our mouths and the meditation of our hearts be accepted in our sight. Oh, Lord, our rock and our redeemer, go in peace. Amen. Go in peace. The next voice of Tuesday you will hear is Dr. E. Dewey Smith. Amen. See you on Tuesday. Amen. And if I don't see you on Sunday.